11 English Stories in One Cute Animal Stories for Kids Cheeky, the Hamster Who Grew and Grew Once upon a time, a little boy named Ben wanted a tiny pet hamster more than anything. He would often dream of having one of his own and would ask his parents daily if he could. But his parents always told him he could have a hamster when he turned seven because caring for a pet was hard work. Ben was disappointed, but he knew that he had to wait patiently. He spent his days looking at pictures of hamsters online and learning about their care. He even drew pictures of what he thought his hamster would look like. One day Ben was playing in his room and heard a knock at his door. Hello, Ben. I've got a surprise for you, said his mom, but you need to keep your eyes closed until I tell you to open them. His mom walks into his room and stands next to his bed. Ben was so excited, he heard something like the sound of something running on a wheel. He knew his wish had come true when he thought it must be a hamster running on the wheel. He kept his eyes closed. When his mother told him to open his eyes, he saw a tiny, fluffy hamster. Ben said, Hello there. What will your name be? Cheeky? Yes. Cheeky. Awesome. Ben and Cheeky did everything together. They played, ate, and slept together. Cheeky even learned to do some tricks, and Ben was so proud of him. But soon, Ben realized that Cheeky was not so little anymore. As he grew, he could no longer fit into his cage. As a result, he slept next to Ben every night. Ben's mom had to buy Cheeky a double bed as he continued to grow. Ben's love for his little friend grew even more. He became so attached to Cheeky that he couldn't bear the thought of losing him. He knew hamsters didn't live forever, but didn't want to think about that. So he took extra good care of Cheeky. He ensured he had plenty of food, water, and exercise. He even took him to the vet regularly for checkups. Cheeky was a happy and healthy hamster as the years went by, Cheeky continued to grow. He became bigger than any hamster that Ben had ever seen. Cheeky became famous all over the world. People would come from far and wide to see him, and he loved meeting new people. The end. Thank you for watching. The Tooth Fairy's Helpers Once upon a time, in a magical forest far away, there lived the Tooth Fairy with all her fairy friends. She was responsible for collecting the children's teeth and leaving them with a special gift. Every year, the Tooth Fairy would write a letter to all the kids in the town nearby, reminding them to take care of their little teeth by brushing them twice daily, once in the morning and once at night before bedtime. The children in the town were always excited to receive the Tooth Fairy's letter on their pillow. They knew that taking care of their teeth would not only keep them healthy, but they would also receive a gift for every white tooth. The Tooth Fairy would use the teeth to make beautiful fairy houses, which were every fairy's dream to receive. However, the list was long, and every year the Tooth Fairy could only make two houses. Willow, one of the fairies, was seventh on the list and was eagerly waiting for her turn. As winter approached, all the fairy houses made of grass and sand would get washed away when it rained heavily. They would then have to build new houses all over again. Willow had an idea. What if all the fairies helped the Tooth Fairy to collect the children's teeth at night and also helped her build the houses? The fairies were so excited, and the Tooth Fairy was delighted to have their help in collecting the teeth. Every night, all the fairies went to the children's houses to look for white teeth. They left a special gift for every white tooth. They collected as many teeth as they could. This year, they all worked hard together, and all the fairies had beautiful white houses. That winter, all the fairies slept comfortably and warmly while it was raining outside, knowing they had worked together to create something beautiful. The following day, the children woke up to find the Tooth Fairy had visited them and left them a special gift for their white tooth. They were amazed to see how many fairy houses the fairies built with their teeth. They knew they had done something special by caring for their teeth, which helped them stay healthy, but also helped the fairies have a beautiful place to live. 
Willow was overjoyed to see her fairy house, made with the teeth she had collected. It was the most beautiful house she had ever seen, and she felt proud to have been a part of creating it. The Tooth Fairy was grateful for all the fairies' help and knew she could not have done it without them. From that day on, every year, the fairies worked together to collect the teeth and build the houses, making the Tooth Fairy's jaw a little easier and a lot more fun. The End Benny the Long-Eared Rabbit Once upon a time, a family of rabbits lived in a beautiful forest. They lived in a cozy burrow under a big tree, surrounded by the chirping of birds, the rustling of leaves, and the scent of fresh flowers. The youngest of the family was a little rabbit called Benny. He was cute, cuddly, and loved to play with his friends. One day, Benny woke up to find that his ears had grown long. At first, Benny was thrilled and thought his new ears made him special and unique. However, his friends teased him when he went out to play with them. They always laughed when they saw him. Benny felt sad and confused. Why couldn't they accept him for who he was? Benny did not understand why they had to make fun of him. He went home and told his mother about what had happened. She hugged him and said, Do not listen to them. Your long ears are a gift. You can hear much better than any other rabbit in the forest. Benny's mother was right. As the days passed, Benny realized the advantages of having long ears. He could hear the faintest sound from miles away, and even hear the footsteps of his friends approaching from behind. He started using his ears to find fruit hanging high in the trees, and soon he could gather enough food to share with his family and friends. One day, Benny's friends saw him climbing a tree and using his long ears to reach the fruit. They were amazed and wished they had long ears like Benny. As the weeks passed, the forest animals faced a new challenge. They needed to cross a river to get to the other side, where the food was. However, the river was too broad and deep to cross, except for one week a year when it dried up. The animals were worried that they would run out of food before the river dried up again. Benny went to see his monkey friend. He asked him how they crossed the river. His friend told him that they used the weeping branches of the trees that hung over the river. They jumped from one branch to another until they reached the other side. Benny had an idea. He would use the weeping leaves from the trees to make a bridge over the river. He knew his long ears would help him gather enough leaves to strengthen the bridge. With the help of his friends, Benny gathered enough leaves to make a bridge over the river. It was a long and tiring task but Benny's long ears made it easier for him to climb the trees and gather the leaves. When the bridge was ready, the animals of the forest were overjoyed. They could now cross the river daily and gather food without worrying about the river filling up again. Benny's long ears had saved the day. From that day on, Benny was proud of his long ears. He knew they made him unique and special. It was okay to have a unique trait and there is no need to be embarrassed about it. Benny's long ears had taught him a valuable lesson. Everyone has something special about them, and embracing and celebrating our differences is essential. The End Coco and Mia, the Spoiled Little Brats Once upon a time, there were two monkey siblings, Coco and Mia. They had lots of toys, but they always wanted more. They asked their parents for new toys every day, and their parents worked very hard to buy them. But no matter how many toys they had, they were never really happy. One day, a big storm came and made their home all messy. Their toys were covered in mud and broken. Coco and Mia got lost in the forest while looking for their toys. Their parents looked everywhere for them but couldn't find them. Coco and Mia felt sad and cried a lot. They missed their parents and wished to be with them. That night, they slept in a scary cave and felt cold and scared. The next day, they met a friendly bear named Barney. Barney didn't have any toys, but he showed them something better. He took them to his cozy den, 
where his mom and dad baked cookies, played music, and sang songs. They laughed, had yummy treats, and played fun games together. Coco and Mia realized that spending time with their family and having adventures were more important than toys. They felt happy with Barney and his family. They slept on a big, comfy bed and had delicious hot chocolate. It was the best day ever. But Coco and Mia missed their parents. They promised each other that when they found their parents, they would tell them they didn't need more toys. They wanted to play, have fun, and go on adventures together with them. The next day, they packed snacks and went with Barney and his dad to find their parents. They walked and walked until they found some of their muddy toys. They knew they were getting closer to their parents. And then they heard their dad's voice. Coco and Mia ran to their parents, and everyone was so happy to be together again. They told their parents they didn't need more toys and wanted to spend time together, play games, and go on adventures. From that day on, Coco and Mia's family and Barney's family became best friends. They did many amazing things together. They found out they didn't live far from each other. They learned that toys are fun, but family time and making memories are even more special. The End Rusty and Rosie, the little rabbit friends. Once upon a time, there lived a small rabbit named Rusty. He was known for his kind heart and adventurous spirit. Rusty loved exploring the forest and searching for delicious carrots and crisp lettuce leaves to munch on. One bright sunny day, after a successful food-finding expedition, Rusty began his journey home. As he hopped along, he came across different animals needing help. First, he spotted a turtle who had gotten stuck on his back. The little rabbit quickly came to the rescue, flipping the turtle back onto his feet. The turtle thanked Rusty and happily waddled away. As the day progressed, Rusty encountered a bird with a broken wing. Without hesitation, he offered comfort and shelter to the injured bird until it healed and could fly again. Days turned into weeks, and Rusty's routine remained the same. After finding his food, he would help needy animals and return home alone. Although he was a helpful and caring rabbit, he couldn't understand why he couldn't make friends. One evening, as the sun began to set and darkness filled the forest, Rusty couldn't help but feel sad. He sat near a gentle stream, tears welling up in his eyes. Why don't I have any friends? He whispered to the night. Just then, he heard a soft sobbing coming from behind a bush. Rusty cautiously approached and discovered another rabbit, just like him, crying alone. Why are you so sad? asked Rusty. Rosie sniffled and replied, I feel so alone. I don't have any friends. With a smile, Rusty said, but we could be friends. Rosie's face lit up with joy, and from that day on, they became best friends. Together, they rescued a family of baby birds whose nest had fallen from a tree. They guided a lost bunny back to its burrow, and they even helped a wise old owl retrieve her lost glasses. They loved helping animals in need. Their kindness touched the hearts of the forest creatures. Rusty and Rosie became the beloved caretakers of the forest, always ready to lend a helping paw or offer a warm hug. They organized a yearly gathering where all the animals would come together to celebrate friendship and gratitude. The End Barry, the Friendly Little Bear Once upon a time, a friendly bear named Barry lived in a big forest. Barry loved playing with his friends, exploring the woods, and exploring exciting adventures. One day, a big storm came and made everything wet and muddy. After the storm, Barry was all wet and covered in mud. But Barry didn't mind the mud. He thought it was fun. The sun came out and the rain stopped, so it was a perfect day for swimming. When he got to where his friends always meet, he saw his friend, Rabbit, Squirrel, and Owl. 
They were all together, talking and giggling. Barry wanted them to join him for a swim. As Barry went closer, his friends looked up and saw him. But instead of smiling, they looked scared and ran away. They shouted, a monster, and ran fast. Barry felt very confused. He didn't understand why his friends ran away. Was it because of the mud, or did he look like a monster? His friends stayed together, still scared and whispering. But then Barry said, Wait, it's me, Barry. His friends turned, and this time they started laughing. They all swam and laughed together. They loved to play with toys together. They had many more fun adventures in the big, beautiful forest. The End Porky the Curious Little Piggy Once upon a time, a curious little piggy named Porky lived on a beautiful farm. Porky lived with his siblings and parents in a cozy pig pen, where they had all the food they could eat and a warm house to sleep in. Porky could hear all kinds of animal sounds around the farm, but he had never left his pig pen house and didn't know what kind of animals made those sounds. One day, Porky asked his sister if she wanted to leave the pig pen with him to see what was outside, but she replied that she was happy with all the food and didn't want to leave. He then asked one of his brothers, but he was too busy eating and ignored him. Porky tried everything to escape the pig pen, but was too big to go under the fence and too small to jump over it. He sat in a corner feeling sad and didn't understand why his siblings didn't want to see what was outside. Every day, the farmer would open the gate to feed them, and one day, he accidentally left the gate open after feeding them. Porky saw this as an opportunity to explore, and even though he was a bit scared, he couldn't resist the urge to leave his house. Walking around the farm, he heard a quack-quack sound and followed the sound. Porky said hello, and the duck introduced himself and said he was going to the pond to meet his friends and swim and play. Porky was thrilled to have met a new friend and decided to walk with him to the pond. On the way, Porky met many animals he had never seen before. He met cows, chickens, horses, and even a friendly dog who wanted to play fetch. Porky was having the best day ever and knew he didn't want it to end. After a few hours of playing and having fun, Porky knew it was time to return to his little pig's house. The farmer saw the little piggy having fun with all the other animals at the pond and decided to open the pig pen every day so they could play with all the other animals. At night, they would go back to the pig pen to sleep. Porky's family was so happy to go out daily to play and talk with the other farm animals. They realized there was much to explore outside their pig pen and were grateful for the opportunity. Porky felt happy and fulfilled, knowing he had made new friends and discovered a new world outside his cozy pig pen. From that day on, Porky and his siblings have lived happily ever after, exploring the beautiful farm with their new animal friends. The End The Adventure of the Sea Turtle Deep, deep under the sea lives a green sea turtle. He lives with his parents and siblings. Turtle is tired of playing with his siblings and wants a friend. Where they live, there are no friends. Today is the day I am going to make a friend, says Turtle. Turtle packs his bag full of food. The sea is enormous, and a friend must be out there. Turtle has decided to travel after breakfast, and then his tummy will be full of food. After breakfast, he should help with the dishes. It's his turn, but he will bribe his brother with chocolate to do it for him. I'm ready, says Turtle. It's his first time away from home, so he feels scared but excited. He starts swimming and swimming, and sees nothing. Wait, I see something, says Turtle. He swam closer and closer, but no, it was just an old shoe he saw. He swam and swam further and saw many bubbles. The turtle swam even faster. It's an octopus. Hello, octopus, says turtle. 
Hello, what are you doing here? I'm looking for a friend, says Turtle. I am too, said the octopus. Let's swim together and search for a friend. They swam and swam some more, then saw some pink fish. Hello, said Turtle. I am looking for a friend, Turtle replied. Do you know where we can find one? The fish is so happy because he is also looking for a friend. Turtle, octopus, and the fish swam together, looking for a friend. They played and chatted while swimming together. Suddenly, they saw a dolphin. Hello, said Turtle. I am looking for a friend. But why? asked Dolphin. You have two friends next to you. Turtle turns around, looks at octopus and fish, and laughs. They all laughed together. We are friends, says Fish. Dolphin asks, Can I also be your friend? Of course, says Turtle. Turtle was so happy. Now he doesn't have to look for a friend anymore. The four of them became great friends and played together every day. They swam together every day, played games, and explored the sea. Turtle was no longer lonely. As they swam, the friends encountered other sea creatures. They met a family of seahorses, squids, and even a giant blue whale. The friends were always friendly and polite to everyone they met. They soon became known throughout the seas as the friendliest creatures. They even helped sea creatures in trouble and rescued a small fish stuck in a net. Turtle, octopus, fish, and dolphin spend their days exploring the vast sea and enjoying each other's company. The End Be the Little Wonder Worm Once upon a time, there was a small worm with stripes named Stripey. He lived in a big, beautiful forest with all his worm friends, but he always felt alone because he looked different. While all his worm friends were green, Stripey was the only one with stripes. His friends used to make fun of him and call him names. They wouldn't play with him or let him join their worm games. Stripey feels sad and alone and wishes he could be like all the other worms in the forest. The forest where Stripey and his friends lived was extraordinary. The trees were giant and the leaves were so thick that the sun could only shine through for a few hours a day. When it was dark, the animals in the forest had difficulty finding food and often went to bed hungry. One day, Stripey climbed up a big tall tree looking for sweet leaves to eat. As he climbed higher and higher, he suddenly felt something warm on his skin. He had never felt the sun's warmth, but it felt nice. He stayed in the tree for the rest of the day, enjoying the sun's warmth. When he finally came down, all the worms and forest animals were amazed. His stripes shone brightly in the dark forest, making a light path wherever he walked. All the animals in the forest were in awe of Strippy's beautiful stripes. They had never seen anything like it before and were all amazed. Stripe's friends were also shocked and realized they had been wrong. From that day on, they all played together, and Stripey was no longer alone. Stripey had learned an important lesson that day. He realized that being different is not bad. Sometimes it can be beautiful. His stripes had made him unique and special, and he was proud of who he was. After realizing the beauty of his stripes, Stripey started to visit the top of the tree every day to activate his stripes in the sun. He knew his stripes could be helpful to his friends and the other animals in the forest. Thanks to Stripey's light paths, the animals in the forest were no longer afraid to move around in the dark, and they could now see where they were going and find food to eat. The light paths also made the forest a more beautiful place, as the paths of light added to the natural beauty of the woods. Stripey's friends were proud of him and appreciated his daily hard work to ensure everyone in the forest was safe and well-fed. They now knew that Stripey's stripes were not something to be ashamed of, but instead celebrated. Stripey's daily routine became a tradition in the forest, and every day, animals would gather around the tree to watch him activate his stripes in the sun. 
They knew that soon they would be able to see the beautiful light paths in the dark forest. Stripey had found his true purpose in life, and he was happy to be able to use his stripes to make a difference in the world around him. The Clever Little Fishy Who Saved the Garden Once upon a time, a group of small creatures lived in a beautiful garden with many colorful plants and big fruit trees. Among them were snails who loved eating the sweetest leaves, birds who sang and bathed in the big fish pond, and froggies who croaked all day. The garden was full of life in the daytime. The pond was full of beautiful and colorful fish. But there was one fish named Flipper who had the most beautiful tail. Flipper loved the garden and all his insect friends. As the weeks passed, the tiny creatures in the garden noticed that the grass and plants were dying, and they could not understand why. The bees could not collect pollen, and the snails had little to eat. The butterflies, bees, and all the tiny insects needed to travel to another garden. Otherwise, they would soon have no food to eat. Flipper was so sad to see his garden friends unhappy, he decided to do something about it. He started to make a cute dance, do flips, and splash out of the pond. The insects loved it, and for a while they were happy again watching the show Flipper gave them. Flipper decided to do it every day. And soon the grass and flowers started to grow next to the pond. They realized that when Flipper did his tricks, the water splashed out of the pond and watered the grass and flowers. Flipper asked all the garden insects and creatures to meet at the pond. He had a great plan to save the garden from dying. The insects were so excited and happy because no one wanted to leave the garden. Flipper told them they needed to work together and take water from the pond daily to water the grass and flowers. The birds collected small thin branches and the bugs gathered a lot of old leaves. They made small leaf buckets. They took the small buckets daily and Flipper splashed water around the pond. The insects collected the water and soon the garden was in great shape again. Even tiny insects, garden creatures, and birds came because many other gardens had died from the drought. Flipper told all the neighboring gardens about his idea of how to water the garden, and soon the other gardens were lovely, green, and full of life. All the gardens with ponds used the water to water the grass, flowers, and trees. Flipper saved the garden with his clever idea and the hard work of all the tiny creatures who lived there. The garden was once again full of life, and everyone was happy, especially Flipper, who loved seeing his friends thriving. The End An Insect Adventure Finding New Homes After the Big Storm The ladybug's teeth are chattering from the cold. My feet are like ice blocks, said the ant. All the insect friends are walking in a long line behind each other. They have gone to find food. It is winter and cold, especially in the early morning and late at night. There are a lot of big, dark clouds in the sky, said the grasshopper. It will probably start raining soon. The ladybug and ant live in a big forest with all their insect friends. Fortunately, all the insect friends found food because it suddenly started raining just as the grasshopper predicted. They had to make a plan quickly. Look, said the beetle, here is a cave. Let's go in quickly so we won't get wetter. It rained for a very long time and wouldn't stop raining for hours. The beetle went out of the cave for the tenth time to see if it had stopped raining. Hooray, shouted the beetle. It has stopped raining. Fortunately, all the animals had collected enough food. Now all the insects were on their way home. But when they arrived at their houses, there was nothing there. It looked like a big flat piece of ground. Where are our houses? asks the ant tearfully. The grasshopper looks around and starts to cry too. All their sand houses have washed away. Butterfly flew in and sat on a rock and said, the dam wall has broken because of all the rainwater. 
That's why all our insect houses are gone, and the insect houses have washed away. Butterfly could fly high in the sky to see what had happened. Oh no, now we have to find new houses, said the grasshopper. Luckily, no one was near the houses when it rained so hard, said the beetle. It's okay, and we'll quickly find beautiful new houses. The butterfly went to look for new houses for us, said the ladybug. A little while later, the ant shouts, Look! Everyone looks at where the ant is pointing with his little finger. It's the butterfly. The butterfly has terrific news. She has found beautiful mushroom houses for them on the hill, where they can stay. There are enough houses for all the little insects. Hooray! shouted the friends. All the insect friends are now excited and no longer sad but happy. They all stood in a long line, ready to follow the butterfly. They walked and walked and walked. Luckily, before it got dark, they arrived at their new houses. All the little insects were so happy about their new warm houses. It will never wash away again, said the ladybug. Here, we can stay for a long time and be happy. All the insect friends slept warm that night while it rained softly outside. The End